Coming up, a Sad Styles production. Get into it. If you were a jackass crew member, what would your name be and what would your shtick be? Because there's like, so, Dave mean, Anglin's the poo guy. <sighs> yeah. So Not that's that. taken. You can't be <laughs> that. Oh, damn. Okay. Uh, uh, is urine still available? Uh, is it, no, you, Aaron McGay. He ate uh, the, Aaron McGay. The, DJ yeah. Aaron, right. Yeah, um, yeah. So are you talking in front of the camera? Because I wouldn't mind being the guy that's like helping conceive of this and only receiving 50% of the nonsense. You're known just because you're the cameraman who throws up? I, I probably would be. Yeah, <laughs> for 100%. Yes. It always amazes me though, sometimes what everyone is throwing up over. Yes. It's never what you, it's never the shit. It's, Actually, sometimes it's the shit, it's but it's usually the never the shit. <laughs> What a wonderful thing that's been invented that we can have expressions like this. So like, it's never the it's shit. It's never the shit, but sometimes it's the <laughs> shit. This is what my grandfather told me on his deathbed. And welcome to the Retrograde Podcast, where we remind you what you used to love and whether or not you still should. I'm Andrew Baskin, and with me as always is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself. Bam, Mikey Jarenworth. Ooh. Yeah, not bad. That's pretty good. Paying a little bit of homage to Bam Margera, yeah. who did not join us for Jackass Forever. Uh, a big, a big, th this movie's in the zeitgeist right now. Yeah, it's a big movie. It's a big movie, and big that's movie. why this week's episode, by the way, I'm, I'm Mikey Jarenworth. Oh, you're Mike Jarenworth. Yeah, I, 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 that's my real name. Okay. It isn't actually Bam Mikey Jarenworth. No, but he is the bad boy of podcasting. Thank you very much. No so, so I've been told. Mm -hmm. I doff my cap to you. <laughs> no, I respect people's titles. If you and, and as you should, because yes. if you don't doff your cap to me, yeah, I'm gonna flick it right off you. <laughs> oh, you yeah, yeah. I'm gonna point to a little dirt stain on your on your shirt. You're yeah. gonna be like, I just washed this, this shirt. clean shirt. This clean shirt. You look down, I flick that cap right off your goddamn head. And you know what that would make me do? I would take my glove off one <laughs> finger at a time. And I would slap you with it. Um, Ouch. Wow. Okay. So welcome to the Retrograde Podcast. Uh, so we're going to be doing uh, a very exciting episode. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to. I'm just going to cut to the chase here. Mm -hmm. So my good friend. Hi. Me. Yes. Or the listener. Why? Well, you. Well, you're my favorite. You're all my favorites. But oh, okay. one of my best friends here, sitting here, the co-host, the bad boy of podcasting, uh, Bikey Mangera, whatever that was. And uh, <laughs> Bikey. Hmm. Oh, next cycling game is good. You can take that. <laughs> um, co-hosts another podcast on the Sass Styles Network yes. uh, called Jackass, where they they break down every episode of Jackass and some, you know, ancillary stuff and the movies. And the reason I bring that up is Jackass Forever just came out. Oh, yeah. It's a big day over at Jackass uh, Incorporated. On, honestly, yeah. And we are incorporated <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, yeah. we're, we're just feeding into our 401ks. Nice. Uh, it just feels like we're, we're making all the right moves. Mm -hmm. uh, don't know if I use that concept of 401k properly. Could be. Could no be. one's going to question me because I don't think anyone really knows no, what it is. No, no. Yeah, everyone, everyone wants experts. They just nod. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, totally, exactly. Totally. No, so we basically started the podcast knowing that Jackass Forever was going to come out. Mm -hmm. And eventually we would be able to focus on it on the podcast. It kept getting delayed and this and that. But this was a huge week for us yeah. because we did it. We, we launched the episode the day it came out. We all saw advanced screenings of it and then came back and the next morning i woke up and was like andrew yeah we gotta we gotta do a, we need some synergy synergy baby let's do jackass the video game and your response was there's a jackass video game <laughs> <laughs> And Ow. <laughs> thankfully, it's right around the time of what we would usually use as the cutoff for this podcast. Right. 2007 is when it came out. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's the fact that it's a lesser known game yeah. in an enormous property yeah. probably tells you all you need to know. <laughs> but I've actually never played Jackass the video game. And I am a massive Jackass fan. You've obviously never played it because you didn't even know it existed. I didn't know it existed. So I, I'm excited to go back and play it. And obviously this breaks a little bit of the structure of what we normally do. We usually take a look back at games that we have played when we were kids, rate and review them out of four bits based on our memory. And then yeah. we come back and rate and review the games out of four bits based on how they hold up in the modern day. Because we don't have any experience playing yeah. this one, we're going to be playing it for the first time today. And here's one thing before we get into it okay. uh, that, that I think might surprise you. I mentioned that it came out in 2007, but would it surprise you to hear that the entire cast and crew did mocap and lended their voices to this game? Wow. That's pretty impressive, right? The voices I could get my head around. Yes. Mocap. Mocap. But like, there are there are two exceptions. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm just like putting little dots on Chris Pontius' penis. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like what do you, when he gets a hit by a bull, they need to know how his penis flops. They have to. Yeah. Actually, if this came out today, there would be penis physics in it. You know for sure. Mm -hmm. And the devs over at Cyberpunk from CD Projekt Red <laughs> would be like, they got it right. Yeah. That's like, that Cyberpunk issue is one of the funniest things. How, because they made a big deal in Cyberpunk. They're like, you can customize your genitals. Yes. What they yes. didn't say yes. is there are three options. <laughs> big penis, little penis, <laughs> vagina. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so cute. I love the idea that some guy who has a penis at home is like, I'm gonna make this character just like me. Big penis. No. No. Little penis. I can't possibly sleep with myself tonight <laughs> if I choose little penis. So that must mean I have a vagina. <laughs> okay. Okay. The truth just like living their own truth, like in good conscience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In good conscience. Good conscience. I cannot apply to my genitals. Yeah. The adjective of large. No, I don't want to lie. I cannot be a liar. I can't make this character a lie. I may have chopped down a cherry tree, mm -hmm. but I cannot mm -hmm. lie about my yeah. Huang. This is, of course, George Washington playing this game. Yes, exactly. <laughs> George Washington Carver. When we bring him back, you know, just, I don't know, in some Frankenstein situation. Yes. And he, George Washington? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we're like, hey, George, there's so much you got to see about this world. First thing. Starting Hamilton. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm not black. We're like, Perform we knew you'd have an issue with that. George. Performed by who? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, after Hamilton, sit down. You're going to play cyberpunk. <laughs> First Amazing. of all, play? What, what do you mean? <laughs> Why is this box glowing? <laughs> you know, I'm George Washington. Mm -hmm. The most famous thing I did was take a canoe across a river, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Right? He did that? Yes, uh, across yeah. the Potomac. Yes. Very famous painting of him yes. pointing. In a very, Point very epically. Uh, so, so that's okay. Sorry, Sorry yes, and all that yes, stuff yes. aside. There are two exceptions to Jackass in the motion capture. Uh, it's Bam Margera and Ryan Dunn for two different reasons. Ryan Dunn had not died at this point. That's not okay. where I'm going with this. Um, I think he died like four or five years later mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. that. Uh, Bam Margera, this was fascinating to me, had a contract deal with Activision because of Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk. Oh. But isn't it crazy to think that his entire likeness was owned by Activision? Wow. Like the Jackass property was different. Granted, I know that in Tony Hawk's Underground, yeah, he and I, I think Wee Man was also in that game, mm. so maybe that was around the same time, and and he couldn't do two like they were basically like pranksters in those games. So maybe it was like, well, you can't do both; you, you got to right. give us one or the other. And the other one Ryan Dunn was because I actually don't know if I knew this, and I'm a, a big Jackass fan. I'd say so. Y you had me at I'm a big Jackass. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was experiencing extreme depression and anxiety. Yeah. So he just didn't take any jobs. So he ended up voicing the character, but didn't do the mocap. I think when you're like bedridden to the point you don't want to get yourself out, yeah. the idea of putting little balls all over your heads and throwing <laughs> yourself down a, a green screen hill just isn't going to go very well. I did like that we like, when we didn't fully understand mental health like we do now, but it's like Brian Wilson was like in bed for 10 years and we're like, wow, we yes. need to write as much about this as possible. But now like Ryan Dunn, we're poking him with a stick like, hey dude, you got to go take this job. And he's like, <laughs> Fine, what is it? And like, it's a video game. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta put motion capture balls all it's over It's probably your body. gonna be garbage. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna throw you around, see how your body ragdolls. Uh, it'll be fun. Um, so I we we definitely want to spend a lot of time talking about like this is gonna be kind of a jackass themed episode. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it dovetails nicely with the other podcast on the Sad Styles Network, which is which, Jack Please jackass. go download, subscribe. They are making awesome stuff around this movie. If you like this movie, which based on the numbers, you saw it. Yeah, everyone did. Everyone saw this fucking which movie. Which is awesome. Go listen to their breakdown. It's so funny. It's they these guys are historians when it comes to this. Thank you. Some I appreciate people that. Oh, I wouldn't take too much of a compliment, but, well, but it's mainly me. It, like some people analyze Washington for their whole life and write yes. 16 books. These yes. guys have decided about jackass. Jackass. <laughs> and Dave England vomiting an omelet. Like, these are important things. Listen, we wanted to corner the market on something <laughs> that the world desperately needs to know about. We it was It's like our version of the Smithsonian. Absolutely. For, like, piss-covered snow cones and small toilet dioramas with giant shits in them. Guys, what more do you want? Like, what, someone has to do it, someone. and it's these three excellent gentlemen, and Mikey's one of them. So, like, yes, I can't wait to talk more about Jackass. But we're actually going to do a that. feed drop as well. Yes. Uh, so that, that's one thing we wanted to mention. Uh, we're going to launch the episode of uh, Jackass where we review the movie. We're going to launch that into the feed of the retrograde. Mm. So that'll be a little bit of a bonus episode coming out later in the week. And, uh, and, and we're also going to launch this episode on the Jackass. So if you're listening to us as fans of Jackass, yeah. welcome to the hey, retrograde, what's, babies. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we always over. do jackass video games. We do, yes, yes. <laughs> every, every week. week, every week. <laughs> Speaking of jackass video games, yes. Sometimes I feel like a jackass playing uh, last week's video game, Pokemon Legends Arceus. So we're going with Arceus. Yeah, because that's apparently the truth, and Riley Little lied to us. Oh my god, it's a big old liar. Big old liar. Well, it's here's the weird thing: is apparently in the North American version, it was originally announced as Arceus, mm -hmm. or sorry, Arceus, Arceus, and they changed it like midway through promotion. Yeah. So like. 
not entirely incorrect, but we still look like doofuses. Because we said RCS, I don't know, 2,000 times. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that was the goal of last week's podcast, <laughs> was just to say RCS 2,000 Mission times. Mission accomplished. I just want to give a quick we update on the game. Yeah. Because we spent the first 60 minutes uh, in last week's episode playing through the opening, essentially a tutorial. Never in our wildest dreams would we have imagined that it, there was a 60-minute tutorial for a Pokemon <laughs> game. But here we are. Um, I've spent a few more hours with it. Oh, okay. And I am still very split on the game. I've enjoyed the time I've spent with it, but it. I think that the video game world, we are all experiencing a Stockholm Syndrome-like feel towards Game Freak and Nintendo when it comes to Pokemon. They give us nothing and we lick their boots over it. Yes. They could have given us so much more if yes. they wanted to. There's no voice acting in no. this. The, the sounds of the Pokemon are still, and we we recognized this last week playing, are still like the Game Boy theme, like ar, 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 screeching. Yes. Yeah. It, and it just feels like the world isn't very lived in. The the combat mechanics are are still pretty pretty dated. Yeah. And, and the the world feels very empty. It's no, it's no Red Dead and it's no Breath of the Wild, oh which is God. just disappointing because like they had so much time to make this. We've been fiending an open world 3D Pokemon game like this one. And they give it to us, but just so half-assed. Yeah. And yet, the gaming community is licking it up. Well, okay, half-assed. I, I wonder, like, it might not be half-assed to them. To them, it's like, this is the game we wanted to do. But it just differs with our vision of how we would like to play a Pokemon game. Like, it just, they're not blowing it out. They're giving us, like, in, like, drips. Yeah, that, you know what okay, I mean? that's it. Yeah. Like, it's good that they took these steps. Right. But these feel like steps they should have taken mm. 10 years ago, five yeah. years yes, ago, yes, right? Yes. Uh, and, and that's the thing is, every time they give us a little bit, we're like, this is great. This Thank is more you. towards what we want. But I think we fill in the blanks with what we actually want. And we're like, let me imagine this is a fully realized, immersive yeah. world, even though it isn't quite. I wonder, I, I, I wonder, like, if you, if you talk to the, uh, those pokey freaks. Oh, those pokey maniacs. If you talk to them back in the studio, like, what do you guys think of the TV show? I mm. bet you they would say, honestly, going like, oh, well, there's a lot of stuff we hate about it. Yeah, true. Because, true. like, you you infantilized, you Disneyfied, like, this world that we maybe never wanted right, to. Right, right, right. Because, like, based on the game that we saw, like, they definitely are cute and stuff like that. But, like, the, between the, the vocal acting or lack thereof yes. and, like, you know, not making it the way we want. It's like, yeah, we wish we didn't give you that opportunity to envision that because we're not going to give you that. Exactly. Like, and it's like, oh, wow, that's, it, su it sucks because I want it like that. But then again, sometimes, did, I don't always, I always shouldn't get what I want. This, that, I know that argument and yeah. I, I agree with that for the most part, but this one just feels like, I know it would be better to have better game mechanics in a video game, fair, right? Fair like enough. Like little things like increasing, the, the amount of time I spend in this game, Yeah throwing items away, discarding them so I can pick up new items is crazy. And there's a way to expand your your uh, inventory. Yes. But you have to pay a person with like four dialogue bubbles to unlock one slot. He's like, hey, I can teach you how to fit more stuff in your satchel. You're like, okay, here's 200 bucks. The next time, 400. The next time, 1,000. The next time, 2,000. And you do it one by one. In order to get like six extra slots, it legitimately took me like 10 minutes. Oh my God. And like those sorts of things just piss me right off. So those are some cons. What's your favorite Pokemon you've caught? You know what? Uh, so I, and why is it Bidoof? It's, yeah, I love Bidoof. They're I fucking love the Bidoof. cutest one. I've always loved Bidoof, yep. but I- Great name. For, for time immemorial mm. in the realm of Pokemon, mm -hmm. you're, I, I, so here's, people call me out on this. I say Eurydice as a joke because a lot of people, uh, when they this order- the Greek rap? Right, when they yeah. when they order Euros, they call them gyros. Yeah, gyros. So I like to call Gyarados, Eurydos, <laughs> just to flip it on its head. And people always call me out on it. And I'm like, no, I'm joking. Anyway, it's become what I do now. <laughs> I mean, on the, oh, shut it's, up. It's okay. great, it's a great bit. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I got a Magikarp like really early. I kind of gamed the system and got somewhere I wasn't supposed to be, oh, caught wow. a Magikarp and obviously yeah. turned that into a, a Eurydos. Yeah, 100%. So that's one of my favorites and oh. it is great to see them you know in in full 3d and the size and all this is it really stuff. big it's it's bigger than mm -hmm. the guys you're facing uh um but one thing that all in all i'll say i'm gonna keep playing this game i'm enjoying it it's giving me that 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 taste that i need that i've been looking for uh for, from a pokemon game for a while one thing that i do complain about and this isn't anything that can be fixed in mm -hmm. like a regular jrpg or pokemon especially is i'm used to playing these games now like dark souls like the FromSoft games where you can find your way into an area in the world you're not supposed to be, but if you're skilled enough, you can actually manage it. No, oh. it's a weird playing a game that's based on numbers and statistics. Yeah. Where it's like if I find an enemy that's too powerful, 
nothing I can do can kill it mm. because it's it's a level 45 and I'm yeah. a level 15. Yeah. And I, I get that that's a complaint that is just, it has no place in this game because mm. that's not the kind of game it is, but it's taking me a while to get used to that because I want to explore. I want to like, you know, just kind of like poke on the Jenga blocks and like see what I can get. Yep. And, and yep. even though some of them are difficult, come out on top, hopefully. Uh, but you just can't really do that. You get punished yeah. pretty pretty quickly for doing that. Huh, that's interesting. I, I'm glad I'm glad you're sticking with it, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exciting. <laughs> it's an exciting time. Like, I'm I don't pissed know. off that you're continuing to play any games, to be honest. <laughs> I love the idea that it's like an absolute slog. Like we should like, oh, wow, that's community service. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, well, that's really good. But you know, Mikey, I... I don't think we have time for this. I think we got to get right into Jackass. Let's, let's get right back into Jackass. I, I, I just wanted to, to give that quick update no, on I Pokemon. But uh, but yeah, rather than running around with my, my anime buddies throwing balls at animals, what I'd rather do is have animals throw things at my balls <laughs> with, my, with my anime buddies. Why? <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> uh, you know, how how you know you know what uh, John Knoxville's uh, least favorite Pokemon is? I was gonna say maybe like a Voltorb, Tauros, Tauros. Oh, the bull! Thank you. Well done, Thank Andrew. Thank you very much. I uh, you know what's what's funny is is when we first went back on Jackass mm -hmm. to and and for the listener, this is going to be very heavily Jackass uh, uh, informed. This portion of it, a because we're doing the Jackass video game, and b because I think that the concept of Jackass. I've used this word before uh, in this episode, dovetails nicely with the concept of nostalgia and retro games. Yeah. What we're getting now is a remembrance of what we had in the past. It's like, hey, does all this stuff that we used to experience, does it still hold up much the same as we go back and play those older yeah. games and figure out whether or not they have any place in the in the modern day? I, I will say, yeah. the reason I want to talk about Jackass yeah. is because it's one of the few things that unites all of us. That's it's honestly <laughs> anything you could find two angles on. Everybody's gonna be like, "Well, you know that person's actually racist." You're like, "Fuck, okay, yes, yeah, you're right. Yeah. We can't enjoy anything." No, Jackass is one of those things that brings everyone together because everyone likes to see somebody get hit in the nuts. It's true. Recipes, Bob Saget, and there, oh, America's Funniest Home Videos. Thank you very much. Honestly, though, it it does have that vibe of just like you know, there's some shitty people around you in the theater. Absolutely. But we're all having fun together. We're, we're all just putting it aside for one second and we're going to see the monster mash with Chris Pontius' penis. <laughs> There's so much. Here, uh, here's one thing that did piss me off a little bit oh. when you were talking about... Oh, Sell down. No, I don't like... Mikey. Okay, I was I was actually going to move past it, but it just... Mikey. It stuck in my craw a little bit. We were talking about motion cap. Yeah. And honestly, I thought we were having a good time. Mm. Like, we were just kind of... Just riffing here, just having riffing a good time. Back and forth. And then you mentioned the whole thing about Pontius and the joke about, I guess we're going to move cap his penis, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Right. And I get that it's a joke and that you're trying, you're trying to make a joke. Sure. With the success of it. Okay. Is up okay, for debate. Relax. But the fact that you think in your. Oh, here we go. For lack of a better term. Yeah. You're really thinking one dog shit ass, tiny little brain. <laughs> the fact that inside there somehow mm -hmm. you think that someone could have mocapped party boys dance the way that Pontius does is frankly, and I don't want to step on your toes. Right. Stop me if I'm overstepping. Uh, okay, I will. And yeah. over the line, your toes are there and I'm on yeah, them yeah. now. I'm looking at the line. Um, I think that's a regrettable dog shit ass, small fucking stupid opinion that you have. Do you think they tried to get the dance and and then they, the computer, <laughs> yeah. the computers all exploded at once. Like, like, okay, do it again. Bang, bang, bang. Like, okay, we cannot do that. Yes. We're meddling with things we do not understand. <laughs> I think so. I think it was like a, like a Ghostbusters crossing the stream type scenario. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Um, no, but I, like the idea that I get to play a video game and see a digital version of Chris Pontius doing the party boy dance. Yeah. I'm fucking amped for. Who, who is your favorite Jackass group? I think Dave Englund is maybe the most underrated. I think he has a lot of, he strikes a good balance between creativity in terms of the concepts of his stunts. Like going back and watching Jackass season one and season two, there are some some hits and there are some definite misses. But one thing that's consistent with Dave Englund is he he's trying to be like artsy in a way. Like he, he filmed a stunt in season one, I think, where there's just a door stopper and he just Love like it. moves it yeah. and that's it. Love it. And he, and they, the Jackass crew talks about that as like a moment when they thought, oh shit, we can actually get creative yeah. with just yeah, filming yeah. things. <laughs> and and sometimes he makes these interstitials and you're like, did I miss something? And it's like, yeah. no, that was just a snowman getting run over by a, a, yeah. a snowplow and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you got to you got to have angles, right? Yeah. You got to have levels. Yes. You got to have the door stopper. You got to take a shit in a Home Depot. Got to take a shit in a <laughs> Home Depot. Gotta, you got to do you got to do both. That was one of my favorite moments in Jackass, maybe in my life, was seeing him take a shit in the Home Depot. Do you have any moments? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've got a ton. So here- here's, That you've taken a shit in a Home Depot? Yeah, a thousand percent, that's what I'm doing after the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Pop into a Lowe's real quick. Um, <laughs> Look, low, Lowe's cold jokes, get you Lowe's cold jobs. <laughs> so what am I, here's me. Here's what I like as, as a Jackass fan. I'm not a huge pee pee poo poo guy. Okay. I'm not a big pee pee poo poo guy. You're a little pee pee poo poo guy? Uh, I'm a vagina pee pee poo poo guy. Um, <laughs> it's gotta be one of three. It's, one of the, it's one of the three. It's nature, guys. That's, a, that's J.K. Rowling's argument. <laughs> so, so, is that I'm not a big pee pee poo poo guy, but it, so I just can't I can't make that clear enough. Um, the, but there are there are exceptions. Yes. The um, the porta potty that gets shot into the sky by Steve O. Fantastic, hilarious when he screams and it goes in his mouth. <laughs> Unbelievably, just height of art, right? Yeah. But if it's it, it, Dave Anglin like throwing up the omelet, I that I can't, I can't do. That's so disgusting to me. There are certain things that happen in Jackass that almost cross a barrier. Like, and who knows where that fucking line is? Because they yeah. do some raunchy shit. Yeah. But there are t like uh, the 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 vomit omelet is, yeah. is one of them, where he <laughs> eats the contents of an omelet, throws them up into a frying pan, and then eats Cooks it. Eats the, eats the vomit on uh, uh, There's another one, uh, Aaron McGahey, uh, or actually, I've always thought it was McGahey, but he pronounces it McGahey in this movie, oh. and I was like, oh, I've been wrong my whole life. Oh. First first time for everything, <laughs> hey. and this is the first time I've been wrong my whole life. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, he does one where he pisses on snow, and he has like the pee snow cone, oh. and that's fucking gross as that's hell. That's so gross. It's but so like, gross. So, like, there is a, but I, the ones that I like, I keep going back to, I was thinking about this, because I was listening to that great episode about the recap of the movie, is that I like the ones where you can see how terrified they are oh, yeah. before it starts. It's because you as a viewer, just something like in on your skin is tingling of going like 100%. Oh, yes. 100%. Because you also know nobody died in this movie. They wouldn't release the movie if somebody died, right? So you're, you're watching going like, okay, they're gonna be okay relatively. Yes. And they're so scared. Like, so one of my favorite ones is when they set off the riot, uh, the anti-riot uh, pellets. Oh, fucking hell, and dude. They, when, so Johnny Knoxville gets one and then a couple, like a week later, they're like, hey, look at that in your stomach. Holy shit. And they go outside to Ryan Dunn, who's like chain smoking. And, yes. he's like, and he's like, you're fucking nuts. I'm not fucking doing that this. Was, it's fun because like we now have the hindsight of, of who we like the most in Jackass. Yes. We've got our history with each of the different performers. But it, it isn't immediately off the bat that you, like you don't immediately realize that Johnny Knoxville is the star. Uh, they, they, you can tell they're trying to push it that way. But he gets to the point where he is so clearly yes. the toughest person in that crew. And that riot one is a huge one where the whole, they, they go to test it out at first. They have like riot mines that like embassies have yeah. strapped up it's, to the outside. And they're like buildings. rubber bullets or something. Rubber bullets. Like, yeah. Like with C, like attached to C4. So they shoot out at you <sighs> and they demo the weapons. And everyone, I think it's it's Dave Angland, it's Ryan Dunn, Bam Margera. Aaron McGee, and, I think? No, I don't no. think Aaron's in that. Okay. I think it's just the four of them okay. uh, and Johnny Knoxville. This is the first time and only time that anyone has ever backed out of a stunt where like they they talk about it. They're like, yeah, Dave Angland, he legitimately, he's like, I'm having a panic attack. I can't do this yeah. once they saw it. And the whole crew, Bam Margera walks out, Ryan Dunn walks out. They're sitting outside. So mad. Just pissed off. They're like, we're not doing this. And yeah. thinking that that's it. They've seen it. They're not doing it. And Johnny Knoxville walks out and he's like, what are you guys fucking talking about? Yeah. He's like, you just stand there and get hurt. That's it. I love that because it was an insight into their personalities. And this was a time where you didn't know as much about them as you do now. Yes. Right? And and also when it happens, them just going like, fine, fuck, it's yeah, done. Yeah, All right, yeah, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes me laugh. And then the, the okay, so I love anything with bulls. Yes. Oh man, so bulls good. have like so a good. long history on Jackass. It's yes. like the it's like Texas City where New York's the fifth character. It's bulls. Bulls is <laughs> the ninth character on Jackass. Concussions whatever. is the tenth. <laughs> Lost to me, bags. <laughs> so, the 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 Toro totter or whatever they call it. Yes, yes. That is funny because between Chris, Steve-O, and and Johnny Knoxville, the terror and screaming when they push up and look around to see the bull, yes. and then go is is Chef's kiss funny? Like that is so height of comedy to me. That's the one where it's two crisscrossed seesaws, basically. Seesaws, and as yes. one person jumps up, the other person goes down. So they try to time it. They don't want to screw the other person over, but they also don't want to be on They're the ground a when the bull comes with by. a bull. Yes, <laughs> Sorry, that's yeah. an important. Did we part. mention there's a bull involved? <laughs> 
And Johnny, it's the same thing where where he's not going to be the first one to leave, nor is he going to be the second no. or the third. And he gets abandoned yes. by everyone in there and and just annihilated and by the pinned ball. to the thing. Exactly. I, I, it's he is so tough. It's remarkable. And like you know, you get to the point where you're tough. You're like. Or stupid, I, I don't really know, but it's uh, the screaming and looking while they're on a teeter daughter <laughs> in the air is infinitely funny to me. And that's one of my favorite things about uh, Jackass as a property is is from the first seasons onwards, they continually get better and better at filmmaking. Yeah, and I know a lot of people who aren't fans of it are going to be like, you can't use filmmaking in a <laughs> sentence with Jackass, but they get really good at filming shots and directing things and making sure they have the proper angles, especially compared to the first season right. when it was all based on like skateboard videotapes. Yeah. And they were just like, well, let's let's just film in like a fish goggle lens and do whatever we want and 100%. piece it together however we can. Uh, but it gets it just gets so much more elaborate and so much more skilled as they go. It's, it ends up being beautiful, even so much so that Roger Ebert gave Jackass two two thumbs or a thumbs up because he was like, "This is filmmaking." If you're enjoying yourself in a movie, right? Why in the world aren't you going like this was a good movie? Right. I I agree with you at the filmmaking thing, but there are parts of Jackass that should never change, and part of that is always that we have something that's funny. Let's try and do it as many ways as possible. One of those is the uh, the jet turbine. Oh, yes, and, yes. And so that <laughs> you could just see them going up one by one. Chris Pontius dressed as a nice lady. Yes. I think D Dave England is a waiter that tries to yeah. serve her. Uh, we have Bam, Bam Margera as an old school football player. Right. And the football gets rocketed at him. Yeah. Uh, like the, the, and then I think Ryan Dunn does like that. What's that uh, Memorex, the guy in the in the couch who's sitting down and oh, the wind's yeah. blowing at him? Yes, like yes. That's the last one that happens. Yeah. I, it's just funny to me that they're like, well, we have this jet turbine. So what do you guys want to do? And they just look at a costume rack and just, you know, like on the fly or making stuff up. That to me is like key jackass. Well, that's that's also like an insight into why people love podcasting so much. And I know that that sounds like a stretch, mm. but the best stunts consistently are the ones where clearly they're all together at a hotel or something filming a stunt the next day. Yeah. But they get together in someone's room. A cameraman follows them in and it turns out what they've been doing is like playing with a muscle st stimulator and like and like putting it on their balls and stuff <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. though this shit was going to happen whether we were there or not. And and with with those camera view and like those experiences, it feels like you have an intimate experience with these people you want to be friends with. And yeah. I think that's what podcasting in as well. It's a very intimate experience totally. feeling like you're in the room talking to yeah, people. Yeah, you want to be on the inside, right? Yes. You don't want to, I don't want to see what they show me. I want to see the stuff that they don't show yes. me. And that's all of Jackass, right? Like, I know I asked you who your favorite one is and you said Dave England. And I, it's funny that when you would, if you'd asked me 20 years ago when it started, yeah. my answer then would have been very different than it is now. Okay, so what would what, what, what both of them, let's, let's give it the retrograde. Past, <laughs> past favorite and past current favorite. Past favorite, current favorite. I, I'll start with my current favorite, which is odd because he's dead, but it's Ryan Dunn. And okay. why? And so I know large, and if you listen to Jackass, first of all, that's awesome. This is a really great <laughs> Thanks, podcast. Thanks, buddies. Um, but is that D Ryan Dunn gets, gets shit on a lot mm -hmm. because y your memory of him is very different than you watch him again. You're like, man, he backs out a lot or like he doesn't fake an injury, but he definitely savors it and stuff. The part of it is that now that I am a 35 year old man watching a 20, 20 year old, which man, that's crazy. It's, I was 15 when nuts. it came out. Yeah. Um, is it like, I would be like that. Yeah. I am I would be terrified constantly of right. going, oh, this is gonna suck. Yeah. Uh, and so I relate to that to a certain aspect. But when I was younger, I love Wee Man. Oh I yeah. yeah. He is just the greatest hang. He seems like the coolest. He really does. He just seems like, Jason all right, Asuna, cool. I think, or something like that. Yeah, he just always yeah. seems like he's down and like always having fun and like, he doesn't take things too seriously. I love that guy. He's he's great. I, and he's, and one thing that, you know, I think Jackass gets a lot of shit for being like, this is just dumb kids doing stupid, dangerous mm -hmm. things. And yet, in spite of that, there is, there, and always has been, for the most part, they get it wrong sometimes, but for the most part, there's been a large spirit of inclusion. Yes. In, in the, in the, they had, they had Jonathan Waters on, on one episode. Uh, John Waters, right? John Waters. John Waters, yeah. Uh, uh, pencil mustache yeah, and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, uh, um, and, and I know that a lot of people look at Jackass and they're like, it's all homophobic stuff because it's dick jokes and this and that. And I'm like, I think it's kind of the opposite. I think you're telling on yourself, my man. Uh, yeah, it's, that's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. And so they've they've attempted to do these things. Granted, not a ton of people of color. Uh, yes. Basically zero women involved. Mm -hmm. but that's being addressed in the new movie. But there always has been the sense, like with Wee Man, for example, mm -hmm. they do lean on very often, like him and Preston Lacey. It's like big man, little man. Vagina, <laughs> one or the other, one or the other. Or, or, or we, man, you're gonna be a baby again. Yes, yes. So they do that, but they also, there are also stunts where it has nothing to do with the fact that he's a little person. Mm -hmm. And I think that that fact kind of, it's like, 
these people are going to make fun of the weirdest things of, of anyone or the yes. most different thing. Weird is a bad word. The most different things of mm -hmm. everyone involved mm -hmm. in the crew. But that's not all they're going to make fun yeah. of. And the fact that Wee Man was included from an early age is it feels less exploitative than some of the TikTok accounts out there. Oh, yeah. Where that that, that have a little person and it's just all jokes about like. I'm handing them a, a cup and then they get it and it's a big cup and it's like, it's yeah. just, yeah. And I will say too, like some of the public pranks and stuff, like, you know, oh, we don't even mention that Spike Jones is a huge uh, yes. creative force, yes. which is crazy to me. Yes. But, and he, more than maybe anybody else, loves the public the uh, pranks. In, in pranks, yes. in pranks. And so, Jackass gave like like anything that does that is culturally influential gave gives rise to much worse versions of it. I, that's so true, and yeah. and it, it can't be faulted for that. It's like that's not its fault that people are not as good as them. No, it's like when people listen to our podcast and then go make a shittier video game podcast. Like, don't do that. We've already got the corner market. Market. We, corner we, know, who you, we know who you. We know who you are. We know who you are. <laughs> who you are. Um, is that like? But their prank styles and stuff is never like, oh, I went up and smacked a guy. Yes. And then yes. and then you're like, dude, it's a prank, it's a prank, it's a prank. No, it's like you're walking into our little scene and then you find, well, this scene is very odd. Yes. And that is where the humor is. And it's not like you know, like you kick the guy in the nuts and you're like, you're like, dude, it's a prank. It's relax. a prank. Like, like that's modern that pranks are just so yeah. reliant on the fact that you have to de-escalate once it's over. Whereas in Jackass, like for example, uh, Daddy and Baby is one that they always bring back where it's like Dave Englund in the first one riding a bike with a baby strapped to the yes. seat in the back and he just has a huge fucking spill right in front of strangers yeah. and they're all like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> but once they know it's, it's a baby, they're like, Oh, this isn't or that it's not a real baby. Yeah, yeah. Because they didn't use real babies, thankfully. No, they used the But baby that would have been funny. That would have been really funny. The baby's like, it's cool, bro. It's cool. Which it's baby cool. did they use? The one from American Sniper. Oh, American. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they used Alec Baldwin's boss baby. Oh, yes. Yeah, he voiced the baby in that one. Yeah. <laughs> but that's different. There's there's a subtlety in good pranks that I think is totally missed nowadays. And yeah. even like, I, you know, local jokes get you local work, but right. like just for laughs gags. Okay. Would have some really elaborate pranks. And it's yes. like, it's like amazing that you, you pieced this together as opposed to just like you said, you, you like, steal someone's purse and yeah. run away and then you're like, no, it's a prank, it's a prank, it's a prank. You, it's a prank. you don't make them the emphasis yes. of the joke. You make them a participant yes, in the joke. exactly. And there's a big difference between those two things. You know, Just for, Just for Last Gags, by the way, is like a Canadian, it's, Just for Last is a Canadian comedy festival and they do these gags where it was, you know, kind of pretty much elaborate, but whatever. And it's it's an inspiration on these really long standing like British ones. Yes. And the British ones are, <laughs> half of the joke is always, hey, boobies <laughs> like every half of them is always like hey guess what that woman's naked now and you're like and they're like oh my like and that's the joke every every time and you're like this is fantastic those are great pranks <laughs> great pranks. Those are great pranks um so listen you know we've talked a lot about jackass in general and i like that that past favorite versus current favorite yeah. and ryan dunn the thing that you mentioned about that it makes a lot of sense we all know ryan dunn as like the viva la bam era ryan dunn yes. where he's like he's got the beard he's too cool for school yeah. and he really owns that in the beginning like his his nickname is Plugs. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. He calls himself Plugs. He he dresses like kind of preppy. Yeah, and he just isn't who he became being. So when you said we shit on him a lot in the in the early episodes of Jackass. I would do so knowing that he gets better, but I'm like, totally. this isn't the one that we want to uh, applaud. Absolutely, because that's the one, that, yeah, the dark shades, the long hair, the big beard exactly. from Viva La Bam. And that's the one you have in mind. Uh, and he's he didn't start like that. But then, like, also, you want to get mad at him going like, oh, so you changed? It was 20 years. Like, you're I've allowed changed so much since 100%. I was 20 years old. Are you, you kidding should. me? Yeah, that's exactly. Like evolution, you're allowed, to, you're allowed to refine who you are as an adult. Yes. And when these guys start, they're so young. Yeah. And and so, I yeah, I, that's not that's not shitting on me. I think that's just being fair. It's like how much you and I have changed since we started this podcast four years ago. Yeah, Jay, go back and listen to the first. Don't do that, please. Don't do that. <laughs> please, God, don't do In that. In fact, I think at this point, since there were bonus episodes, it doesn't go beyond 200 episodes. I think I think that's what the feed's limited to. Oh so, God. yeah, if you haven't gone back, you're... <laughs> You're, You're missing out of luck now. Yeah. yeah, go go to our Patreon. We'll put them on over there. Let's let's shift then to the game because okay. you know we've spent a lot of time talking about Jackass, and I could spend a lot more time talking about Jackass. If you like that, head over to Jackass to Jackass Podcast. You can search that up. It's on it's on YouTube as well, where we cut in some of the clips of the show or the episodes that we're watching. That's a lot of fun for people. Or you could subscribe based on the episode that you listen to. That's on this. Hell feed. yeah, do oh, it. Come on, guys, do it. Enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. Uh, Have but fun. Let's, let's talk about the video okay. game now. Uh, September two thousand seven. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> okay, fine. Ugh. <laughs> I hate that you're making me do this, Andrew. 
September 2007, released for the PlayStation 2 PSP and a 2008 a DS version came out, which is not the version that we're going to do. Whoa. Um, the It was developed by Seed, Seed like S-I-D-H-E, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, uh, and published by Red Mile Entertainment. Now, the reason why I don't know how to pronounce the name of this development company is I don't really know much of what they've done. I did recognize a couple games that they did. Rugby Challenge 2, uh, which isn't a game I played, but like, okay, I guess you're making a rugby sure, game. Sure, sure. Uh, Blood Drive is a game that I remember. Okay. Uh, uh, Grip Shift is another game I remember. They also did a cart game. And okay, I want to walk, I want to do a little game please, with you, okay? Please. I they want to play a, a game. I want to play a game. Uh, which I want to say this quickly. The modern jackass crew has clear PTSD, like no jokes. And they get, every time they get pranked, they like go into, oh, no. it's like, have you ever seen, have you ever seen Battle Royale, the movie Battle Royale or read, yeah. read the book? Yeah. It's, there's one character in it who had Battle Royales, there's a hundred, it's, it's actually- like Hunger Games. Yeah, it's like, it's like Hunger Games. It's what all the Battle Royale games like PUBG and Fortnite and those yes. are based on. Um, it's, it's about a hundred school kids who get sent to an island and the last one standing wins. And there's one character who gets sent who has been there before. So yeah. knows what to expect and is like, I'm not doing that that's a trap dave angland is that person in this movie <laughs> they like trap him in a room and and one of them's like like oh there's a door we can escape we can escape and he's like oh conveniently there's a door yeah i'm gonna go through the door and he's like he's right guy goes through the door gets fucked over it's like just little things like that oh, are very funny. funny um but we're gonna we're gonna walk you through this uh because i said want to play a game and that sounded like yes. saw because i think he would survive saw is what i'm trying to say oh he, he, would, he would be Jake it's saw. either that or he'd like the music would start and you immediately curls into a ball <laughs> he's like it's happening it's, gonna, it's starts, happening again he just starts sawing his <laughs> leg i get like, it what do you what do you need from me he gets naked so you're making a cart game okay and it's based on the movie madagascar what do you call it madagascar a hundred percent. Madagascar cart. Ma madagascar carts yeah they didn't what and they that's how it? i know it's a shitty game madagascar carts <laughs> I, it's so much better. I thought you were going to be like, Cardigascar. <laughs> You're like, what? What? Madagascar cards would have been so much better. I love the idea that they make the game. It's shipped. It's, you know, sealed in a thing. In the, and he's like, man, that was great, man. That was awesome. Congratulations. Clink of champagne. And he's like, Madagascar. Oh my God. <laughs> You no, know, puts the champagne glass like down on the game cover and it covers the, the one. It's just Madagascar. Usual suspects. Yes. The glass is falling to the ground <laughs> as he's like staring at it. Madagascar. Uh, so uh, those are some games that they did. They really didn't make a ton else yep. uh, worth note. Uh, but but as I mentioned, they they had uh, uh, the likenesses and mocap and all that stuff in the game. I actually tried to, I don't know if you knew you could do this, but you can go to the internet archive, like archive.org yeah, yeah. and visit past websites yes. that have existed. And I tried to get access to the Jackass the game website oh, wow. just to see what it was all yeah. about. I couldn't quite get past the the age limitation thing, which was weird. <laughs> yeah. I also had to fake my age to pretend that I was old enough at the time that this right. came out to, <laughs> yeah. to be able to play it. Um, but that that would have been kind of cool to be able to do. The story is, is there interesting. Is a story. There is a story. No, I'm can, gonna, can, I, when we get to it though, can you? I have guesses on how the hell do you play this game? Oh, dude, I, let's let's talk. Okay, because. Honestly, the like, concept of the game that I'm that I read about, because again, you and I haven't actually played no. it yet. It sounds like a really cool concept. Hmm. So, what? Do, okay, what do you think you're doing in this game? Okay, so I was thinking that either it's a little bit like sandboxy, where you can there are natural mouse trap style things where you can kind of do a stunt if you put it together, like Fall Guys almost. Yeah, not, not Fall Guys. Sorry, uh, 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 deliver totally reliable totally delivery reliable, service. Exactly. Sort of where you're yeah, like, yeah. okay, wait. So there's a toilet. And there's right. A okay. Right. Maybe I attach this bungee cord to, or. It's like, um, what is it called? Stunt driver? Where it's like- Stuntman. You, stuntman, where you make the, as big of a prank as you can. Or it's like Tony Hawk, where you have to nail perfectly pranks. And I can't figure out which one is the best. It's honestly kind of, the sandbox, no. Yeah. I don't think they had the budget to do that. Yeah. But it is a little bit of both. It's So this, from a story perspective, and then we'll get into how it actually plays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeff Tremaine is hospitalized. <laughs> Which is like him. Johnny Knoxville gets hit by a bull, and I guess like his shoe flies off and hits Jeff Tremaine in the head and gives him a concussion. Oh, I thought it was that. cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Tremaine has a rare blood disease. <laughs> oh, what? That's so sad. Kidney stones. He's got some kidney stones. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so basically, the crew needs to direct themselves. Oh. And you are in the crew. So you're actually controlling Steve-O and Johnny Knoxville and Pontius and all these guys. Um, as the stunts go on, uh, they, they give you like objectives to do. So you can 
uh, say you get like kicked off a cliff or something like that. It's like roll and try to make it as outrageous as possible. Okay. But if you hit that cactus, there's some more points. Uh, and then you can actually like, as you film them, you, you the whole thing is you need to make a season. So you need to film seven episodes. Oh. And in order to fill an episode, you have to have X number of stunts, but they're all set pieces. And you want to get as many points in the set pieces as you can. Okay. They also have like a director mode where you can take your stunts clip them together using different camera angles and make an episode of Jackass. That's really cool. It sounds awesome. And I'm surprised that, I should say, I'm not surprised that it doesn't end up being good, but it feels like there is a good game here somewhere. It's a good concept. It is a good concept. You know who really comes out uh, smelling like a rose? Jeff Tremaine. <laughs> Jeff Tremaine. <laughs> Jeff Tremaine. Without Jeff Tremaine, this thing is falling apart. <laughs> you need to put it back together. It's like Jeff's sitting there like, nice, nice. Honestly, though, that is kind of like apparently Jeff is just like the man and he had so much in uh, so so much of a hand in like Wild Boys and everything yeah. as well. Like he would travel with the crew and he ends up being a, pretty much a badass. Like he takes part in a lot of stunts yes. down the line. And, I will yeah. say he, it sounds like he's most most of his job is being a therapist. Like it sounds like he just is really good at handling the guys. Yes. You know what I mean? Like talking to them and making sure they're, you know, whatever. I think they just trust him so much. Like there's moments in this new movie as well when someone does something outrageous <laughs> and then you just hear Jeff off camera being like, yeah, we need another shot. And they don't question it. Yeah. It's just like, okay, like we trust Jeff's, Jeff said he didn't get it. Then we gotta, we gotta go with Jeff Knox says. One leg over the bullpen and he's like one more. And he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that actually, I I will say, this isn't, I, you can't really spoil anything with Jackass, <laughs> but. What would you spoil? It, it's very clear that Johnny Knoxville does a stunt early on in the filming. Okay. And this, there are stories about this as well that really fucks him up. Yeah. So he doesn't do a lot in this movie. And it's clear that he was either recovering still or told by the doctors, like, you're gonna you're die. You're gonna <sighs> die. Yeah, there's there's some, like, if you want it, there's a GQ article. Oh man, that was nuts. That is really hard to read about Johnny Knoxville. So I'm glad that he is maybe looking after himself a little yes, bit Yes, as much as he can. He still gets hit by a fucking bull. But I, yeah. I know. <laughs> one of the greatest, one of the greatest sketches of all time is him walking to the center of frame, lighting a cigarette. Yes. And then getting absolutely housed by a well, bull. Well, the funniest thing about that is they actually do in the movie a side-by-side -side of, of that shot of him getting hit okay. by the bull and what just happened in this movie. And the um and it's it's exactly the same. Oh really? But in one of them, he's immediately wheeled off to the hospital, and in the other one, he's totally fine. And it, that was a moment where I was like, "Fuck age, <laughs> age." Seriously, like yeah. let's get the younger kids in in Jackass <laughs> now. Let's 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 wheel these guys literally off the set. Time yeah. for the new generation. Seriously, too. seriously. <laughs> okay. Um. So here here's one thing that kind of worries me a little bit. Okay. They use this as a selling point for the game. Okay. But they were like, yeah, for the for the uh, for for all the stunts that you do. We're using all the stuff that we didn't film for for the TV shows. And there's a part of me that's like, because you oh. couldn't. The other part is because they weren't good enough. Oh, so, you know what I mean? I'm like, which one is it? I'm not sure. Maybe they were too elaborate. Maybe. Does that disappoint you as a hardcore Jackass fan that you wish you could have relived some of the famous sketches? Man, if I got or to do the cup test or something like yeah. that, that would have been great. Right. You know, but you're the person off the camera, like throwing things at the person's <laughs> cup. Like, you got, you know, like those sorts of things. That would have been great. Yeah. Um, but it is cool that the the crew seems to have had a big hand in creating this game. Right. And I'm excited to see what that ends up looking like. I know that as soon as the opening credits goes and then you hear the opening music yeah. and you hear the voices of like Johnny Knoxville and, and Bam Margera or Bam's on it, but Chris Pontius or something like that. Preston it's gonna feel Lacey. Great. Preston Lacey. Yeah, who could forget? No one can forget. <laughs> Definitely not we, man, because they were they were hand in hand in, in most of these movies. <laughs> you know how I said the thing about Ryan Denver? I'm like, man, that guy complains and like, I totally understand that. Preston oh, Lacey always seemed like such a jerk to me. <laughs> he honestly, he... I, I 100% to the point where sometimes it feels like it's not even funny. He's yeah. just being a little bit of like, but granted, prick. I would be too. <laughs> yes. Like I would absolutely be him. It's if amazing that more of them aren't. <laughs> exactly. I'm terrified. I will be a jerk. Yes, exactly. Like, like, just a heads up. If we're ever in a situation where oh, everyone's laughing at me because I'm hung over and just had to drink 50 cups of eggnog. Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. I oh, and the other guy that. threw his eggnog vomit on my head. Yeah, I'm going to flip a table. And he literally does. <laughs> that is the most mad. <laughs> He's, that is so funny. That also sounds like it's so funny because kind of like just what we're going back to is like, that sounds awful. Yeah, it's just fucking terrible. So it's so funny that it has to happen to somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's what's funny about it. Because if somebody like I love eggnog. 
nice little nice little rocks glass of eggnog sounds great 50 glasses of eggnog 50 sounds glasses like a of fucking eggnog. nightmare that's like the andy daly in review like eating 12 pancakes <laughs> that's a that's a different deep <laughs> oh, cut God, but let's do that. um so there's the mtv story mode which i described the episodes where uh, specifically where you just do random stunts and then the director mode which i explained let's get into reception of this game <sighs> and i but i don't honestly i don't want to let this scare us okay because the reviews aren't as bad as i expected oh Given the fact that no one really knows about this game, yeah. its average rating was a 58%. Not good. Not good. But okay. <laughs> it's not a 30. It's not a celebrity death match. No. Uh, no IGN yet. <laughs> gave it a 6. GameSpot gave it a 6.5. Uh, 1UP gave it a D+. Plus. X-Play gave it a 2 out of 5. And it's not the Nintendo DS version, which had a 35% Metacritic yeah. score. So who knows? It's basically just a bunch of mini games and like tracks through like... If WarioWare was loved, maybe this will have something charming to it. Maybe I, you know what? In this, you know, we t we talk about this all the time. Maybe the the theming and the you know the characters that we love so much are in it, so we will love it, you know, that much more because hopefully, of it. hopefully. you hopefully. know, hopefully, right? I know, I, I know, I will get something out of it there because it turns out Jackass is all about nostalgia. I said this before we started recording. Um, this is Jackass Four is definite, like objectively, the worst of the Jackass movies but I still fucking loved it because it's a different movie and it's more about the fact that they're leaning on nostalgia as opposed to like really hurting themselves. Wow. And that's cool. Like it's, it yeah. just feels different. And it, it, it like we do on this podcast, this question of like how much can nostalgia play a role yeah. in the grading of a game? Rotten Tomatoes gave Jackass 4 the highest rated of any Jackass movie ever, even yeah. though it's definitely not the best one. No, for sure. I think we do that a lot with other stuff where we just didn't appreciate in the time. And so yes. they were before we make like I, I hate to say, it, but like Return of the King winning the best best Oscar. Yeah, best picture, excuse me, at the Oscars. Was it the best Lord of the Rings movie? Probably not. I think it's actually maybe the, the worst. They're giving it to the, the series. 100%. And that's what they're doing. Leonardo DiCaprio winning Best Actor for The Revenant. Or Martin thank Scorsese you. winning it for Departed. Departed. No, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, but yes, I agree with you. Let's depart from this Hello. portion of the podcast and take a little bit of a break and play the game. Now, if you're new to the podcast, mm. we should say we actually are going to get into some of the gameplay. If you're listening to it, you'll get to hear us uh, play playing playing the game. Uh, or if you want to go go watch on YouTube, because yeah. we're actually going to have that clip playing some of the gameplay uh, you can you can watch us and get our get our full reactions as we go then we're going to come back and uh, rate and review the game in all the ways that we normally do andrew are you ready for this i, I can't wait to go hurt ourselves let's fucking hurt ourselves <laughs> see you guys on the other side jackass the game jackass the game warning okay oh god oh we don't get johnny knoxville reading us the warning that's a little bit disappointing oh that's disappointing yeah. whoa there's the intro you got the music you got steve-o in a shopping cart Flying like this is <laughs> like we're just basically watching animated versions of all the characters do jackass shit. Party boy doing party boy dances. Johnny Knoxville oh falling off of shopping God. carts. Ryan Dunn punching people. You got the Steve O's animated thong. thong. Keep God out of California. We made, like honestly, all this is. I'm really excited right now. Oh my God! And I this don't is know cool. if I should. Be. Okay, so Johnny Knoxville picking up a camera. Shooting the new season, and we still got to get the other guys here. And now we need a new director. Because that one broke the camera and sprained his vagina in the process. <laughs> sprained his vagina so he doesn't have a big or a little penis. <laughs> We've established that. So the whole crew's just standing around. I think they're they're taking uh, Jeff Tremaine off in the ambulance. Yes, it looks like that. And they've got the large shopping cart there. Yes. They didn't mention him by name, though, eh? No, weird. weird. And Johnny Knoxville, I know we said this looks good. He does not look like Johnny Knoxville. He, I don't know who close. that is supposed to be. Like, oh, there's a party boy one? Yeah. So you're, I'm starting party boy. You're a big party boy guy. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Here's something. We're looking at a screen. The loading screen is basically a rough sketch on lined paper of what the stuff yeah. is going to look they like. Got some music, them dancing. Bam Margera used to fax in little stick figure drawings to MTV and that's how they build the stunts cool. out. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's nice. I like that. So it's party boy mm -hmm. where he just takes off his clothes and starts dancing. I bet you this is a rhythm mini game. Oh God. Oh no. Party boy theme, Dave Rowan. Partying right now. Oh, it is. It, it is, is a, a rhythm game. game. It is oh, a mini game. man. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, just for the music, I'm into it. You See, can... it's tough though because as I'm doing it, you want to look at him. I want to look at him. I know you want to look at I, that I party can't boy. Have a sexy ass dancing right in front of me and not look at it. What is this? I do. So it's an old school eight like video store, and uh, everyone behind him is like scolding him, watching. <laughs> they don't like it. 
Uh, it doesn't stop Party Boy from dancing, though. It's very easy so far. E the the button presses aren't really corresponding to him dancing. Like, no. He's just... It doesn't feel like I'm actually pressing the buttons rhythm rhythmically. You're not but controlling the character. The button presses come at rhythmic times, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> X, X, down, down. down. Yeah. Triangle, yeah. triangle, up, up. Right. But it's not like he's jumping up when I press up and... No. And Xing when I press X. I wonder if you just stopped, would he stop? Oh, that's a great question. I think obviously we're not gonna do that because we're professionals and we want to get high scores. Oh wow. Whoa, that's hard. Okay, never mind. That just got hard. Okay, all of a sudden. yeah. I got 353. I got paid, Whoa. get a score of 250. Oh wow, you can get a score of 750. That must be perfect. You must have to get it perfect. Okay, so Mikey got the the one of the three accomplishments. But man, that's tough because it feels like you did really well. Yeah, and here's the thing. Oh, party boy in challenge mode. So now you can have him as a playable character. That's great. That's great. Okay. My my concern is I don't have any reason to ever want to replay that. You well, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cool. And that may be the issue with this game. You got suburban wakeboarding, which is really a play on one of the season one uh, uh, episodes where they had uh, urban kayaking. Urban kayaking, Which I is very them. similar to this. So that's kind of a deep cut and I appreciate it. So I'm going to go with Golf Rally. Uh, also one of the ones that like I think contributed to maybe the worst concussion <laughs> Johnny Knoxville's ever had. Uh, it nearly killed him. Like it The really thing landed on him. him. Yeah. Uh, I also think it contributed to like just harassing uh, municipal golf oh, employees. that's so true. Like <laughs> Alright, so we've got a, a mini golf course. Steve-O and Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville looks terrible. Terrible. Steve-O looks like Steve-O. Oh, so here's this school. So you're Steve-O driving the cart. Yeah. And it's giving you almost like Tony Hawk style goals to do. Right. Yeah. Run down, knock down all the flags, run down five attendants, bail out of the attendants hut, into the attendants hut, get 1.5 seconds of airtime, and get over $10,000 of injuries. Okay. Okay. So this wouldn't work in Canada. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. So you're knocking down some elephants. That's always working. Um... There's also security guards who are like trying to prevent. That's not a part of Jackass. Is no, security yeah. guards <laughs> running down strangers and security guards. I thought this was going to be a little bit more interactive because conceptually, this is a good idea. Yeah, you know, for you sure. Got, you got people chasing you around. You got certain stunts that you got to do within the time limit here. Yeah. This is another one, Andrew, where like once you get rid of, like once you understand what you're supposed to do, Ooh. it stops being fun. Yes. Like same with Party Boy where I'm like, oh, that was a cool concept, but I don't want to do it again. Yeah. Is, are, how, are, how are the driving mechanics in this? Are they okay? Uh, you know, okay. It's a golf cart, so you're not like asking for precision driving or anything right, like that. Right, right. You got three seconds bailout. All flags knocked down and you get an abrasion bonus. Wow. Okay. We actually used to hand that out at my old job. Oh, did you? Abrasion bonuses? Ab abrasion bonuses, yeah. Well, what business was that? Uh, we were in the business of kicking ass and taking names. <laughs> business was good. <laughs> and we're all out of names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And you need to get 1.5 seconds of air time. Oh, I feel like that should have been something kind of easy to do. Yeah. And right. I'm not sure how you can injure yourself for $10,000. Why don't you just, like, break your own leg? Yeah, yeah. Just, 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 just start punching just yourself. Fight clubbing yourself. Yeah, you go to the doctor and you're like, "How much is it going to cost to fix this nose?" Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like eight grand. Yeah. You just like punch it a little more. Mm -hmm. Is that harder to fix? It's like, yeah. Now it's about thirteen. You're like, good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stop that. What if I take out one of my lungs? <laughs> like what? So it, rooftop. Cars. Okay, so you, it's a Wii game. A Wii game because it's Wii Man. Uh, so win five out of five games. Oh, so it's you're in competition with the other guy. Looks like Ryan Dunn and Pontius are there. Okay. It hasn't told us. Oh, accelerate tap. Oh, there you go. Huge lead by Ryan Dunn. Is that me? Oh, I went straight off. The, I didn't realize I was supposed to break. Oh, you, oh, you have Holy to stop shit. it before oh, the edge. And do you get it? It's not because you're Wii Man. It's because you're, uh, it's cause you're a, a you mini stop. game. <laughs> why can't I stop? I'm going right off. But the roof. watch how slow he's going comparatively. Okay. I've got to win two more. You tap X to go fast, and then and then, and then you got to break to stop. You're okay. trying to get as close to the edge of the roof without going over. Yes. So tap, tap, tap. Now it helps that I understand there's a certain point at which you can't pedal anymore, and then you basically press break. Oh, oh you man. know what? Here's my strategy. Yep. I'm always going to be behind him. Yep. So that I can see like how when he breaks. Yes. And then I can decide: Do I want to last longer or no? Nice, see, Fucking Mike, hell. you won. I there you go. It. I think I you it. figured it out. So, it, does this bum you out knowing that Ryan Dunn didn't do the uh, animation on this? Yeah, I'm like, this isn't how he pedals a shopping cart. You're a scholar of this. Go, go, go. Fall off the building. Oh, he uh, got a really good one. Well, if I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose big. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my motto. Man, this is hard. That is it, hard. It's not unfun, though. I just think there are ways to make it better. 
Let's continue that one. I, okay. I, yeah, do it again. I don't want. No. I don't, oh, you don't, don't want to do, do it again. again. Okay. I'm bored. Okay. <laughs> These Wii games aren't good, but I like Wii instead of mini games. Yes. Wii games instead of mini games. That's I like funny. that. It's theming. It's theming. What are, the large games are pressing games? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to Pachinko Precipice, where it looks like you're going to bounce. You're going to bounce. You're going to fall down a hill and maybe hit a cactus or a bus. We're going to avoid the mattress, it looks like. Yeah, don't hit the mattress. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be Chris Pontius again. I'm Chris Pontius and this is Pachinko Precipice. Pachinko Precipice. Okay. I do like the intro and kind of the hand camera motion of it. Yep. So you got Steve-O beside you and it looks like, okay, so here's your goal. You can fly 30 yards before the finish, finish with over $100,000 <laughs> in injury, hit a mattress, land in the water, get to the bottom in 30 seconds. That's that, That'll help. And you get kicked down. Okay. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh, oh just, so you, oh. it's almost like you're moving the uh, you're moving the world around you. <laughs> when you press R one and L one, the move uh, the 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 world moves around you. There's like some tumbleweed. Stevo's dragging across the ground. This is another kind of uh, uh, looks like a uh, uh, ragdoll physics. Incredibly kind of thing. ragdoll. You're getting a lot in, in terms of damage. It is kind of cool that like as you're going down, it tells you what's breaking and what's not. Yeah, that's not. cool. Okay, I thought you was basically a, broke. Yeah, oh, okay, so I over a hundred thousand dollars in injuries. Okay. That's not bad. So it's we finished with over a hundred thousand dollars in injuries and hit a mattress. Uh, but we got to fly land thirty in the water yards. And didn't fly thirty yards. Oh, Johnny costume. We unlocked Johnny one. costume one, baby. Johnny costume was my favorite Mortal Kombat character. <laughs> Johnny costume. <laughs> oh, now it's Johnny Knoxville kicking us off. Nice neck stinger. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Love, we're like falling down a cliff and it's like neck stinger. Wow. Yeah. You, it's really hard to get momentum going. Eh? You, it takes a while, but it's kind of, it's kind of just in rhythm. Man, rhythm has come up a lot in this episode. Rhythm. Well, rhythm is a dancer. And I know a lot of people <laughs> don't want to admit that, but that is just the truth. Oh, right that's foot. a good cliff right there to get some, get some, a uh, big get jump. some air. I'm trying to get like a bunch of air. It's just hard to get forward momentum going, right? Like, yeah. so let's see, uh, let's see what we got there. Oh, there you go. So we, we've made so far three hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. Now I understand why these people do this. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. We made a lot of money here. Let's uh, let's see what else we got stunt-wise. Yeah, that was okay. So we far, though, are you enjoying the stunts? Am I enjoying the stunts? <laughs> Is a very good question. I think the ones where you'd go back and play them again, like the Those golf are, cart. I could see that being kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, the golf cart and the, the pachinko one, I think are pretty interesting. Uh, so we're doing suburban wakeboarding again, where we're on the back of a truck. It's going to be taking us through the city. And this is the last of the stunts in this episode. And as we complete some of the tasks, it's giving us an episode rating. Yeah. So it's saying like, this is how good the episode is. So I'm assuming you want to get a five-star episode or before going to the next one. Right, right. Okay, so we need to destroy 30 mailboxes, flip over five trash bins, grind a moving vehicle, grind a moving vehicle fence right. grind 500 yards, and bail out into a jackass RV. So and you're jump. Chris Pontius. I'm Chris Pontius. Oh, nice, nice little grind. Hit another mailbox. I'm just going to grind and hit mailboxes. This feels like uh, this is what I'm going to do this time. Yeah, 100%. Love it. Oh, what a cut. This is, you know what? Doesn't control very well, but in, in terms of the premise, I like it. Yeah, this is, it, it should be, the idea should be, what is the stuff that we couldn't do ever on the television? Yes, because it was you way know? too dangerous. <laughs> exactly. Like this is this makes sense. You could see how this would be something that they would think about. I I, I like the idea that Bam Margera is like, and he's like, all the ideas that MTV told me I couldn't do because we would die. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll do those. So we got paid quite a bit for that. It wasn't fun, but like I get it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. A lot of this is just. It's almost like when they were making the game, they were like. Here's the concept, and everyone's like, that's a great concept, but they didn't decide to make it good. No. And this is really frustrating. Whoa. Oh, bailouts. I, you know what I just did? What? I pressed triangle instinctively, like it's like Tony it's your Hawk. Grinding, like you're grinding. Yeah. Uh, okay. But the problem is, they didn't spend time to make the game fun. You know no. what I mean? Uh, yeah. And if you bail out, that's it for the turn. And what's frustrating about this is. All of the progress, all the grinding that I did yeah. gets reset from one round to another. I was thinking about, I'm just going to do mailboxes and grinding. Like which, I'm literally like, going to stick to the left side of the screen, which, which goes against the fun aspect. Of yeah, I was going to say, you know, you know what people love about Jackass is the work element. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually. Oh, you have a lot of grinding too. You, you'll be able to get to 500. This is all I've done. You got 502. There nice. you go. Nice. You've oh. unlocked episode two. Okay. So let's see what happens at the end of this episode. So in a lot of these ones that you can replay, they open up into a challenge mode. Yes. So you can go back and get like high score and that sort of yeah. thing. Which just, you know what a lot of this game feels like? It's just padding. Yes, exactly. Like they knew that there wasn't that much to do. It's all Wii games as they call them. Uh-huh. 
That's in the British Some version, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. R one to go to the next episode. Looks like you got Preston Lacey with a little bit of an interstitial. I guess. Or no, that's just a guy lifting weights. That's just a guy. How embarrassing! <laughs> it's just a large man. Oh wow, Jeff. So so this is we, we got a cut scene, and it's Jeff Tremaine. <laughs> Jeff Tremaine falling and then immediately fracturing his nuts hit on a his, hot fire hydrant. Hit his dick on a fire hydrant, and that's... Those morons have started shooting without me. Oh, no, that oh, is, Preston is Preston Lacey. Lacey. And he farted in his jeans, I think, while he's lifting <laughs> weights. And he's upset that they've started the game without you. The season, so, the season. So that's... that's So Preston Lacey's now a, a, a usable character. There's extra revenue of it. Like, that's it. That's yeah. that's the game. That's the game. You just do this uh, seven times. Poo tug? The poo tug. Tug of war into poo. Oh, uh, tug of war into poo. Big balls. That makes sense. Elephant poo dive based on one of Steve-O's early stunts that he did. One of your co- uh, your co-hosts would have loved elephant poo Oh, dive. yeah. Jay, the poo man. Yeah, he's the, the poo, poo man. man. Yeah. Demolition golf. He, okay, you know what I hate admitting? He is a pee-pee poo-poo guy. He is absolutely a pee-pee poo-poo wow, guy. I didn't think about in that. The, in in the, most, the most pure form of that word. Here's, <laughs> here's something I'll say about it before we go to the other side. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Let's save our thoughts for the other side. L okay, I'd love to save for the Let's other side. Let's do that. Okay, we'll see you guys over on the other side. <laughs> And welcome back to the Retrograde. Hi, I'm Mikey Aaronworth, and welcome back to the Retrograde Podcast. Oh, that's really good. I like Thanks, that. Thanks, man. I've had practice. Yep, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I just stand in front of the mirror, say it, yeah. and then I just like slap myself in the face. Yeah, you, you have like that leather jacket on, some aviators, yes. a sweatband. That was like, it, I mean, we kind of talked about this in the gameplay, but like the amount of influence Jackass had on fashion. Oh, yeah. You know what I did have? Bam Margera in one episode of the show, or maybe in one of the movies, had a wristband like a sweatband yeah. with a watch in it. Oh. And I oh, yeah, got was, one. I wore the shit out of that That was thing. very popular. And no one ever, ever complimented it. They all hated it. Really? I loved it, though. It's, it was very popular this time. You're right. They did. They did. Uh, that, that style influence, that skater kid yes. look was well, cause, very Because remember how popular in general headbands and sweatbands were? Oh, yeah. Huge. It's crazy. Crazy time. What a weird time. What a weird time. And we're not even, like, we're talking about a show where people hurt themselves on purpose, and we're like, no, that's not weird. The, the fashion. fashion. The oh, fashion is weird. My goodness. That's that's the real painful aspect of that. Yes, exactly. Uh, so we just played Jackass the game. We did. What an interesting foray into video games. This that's is way of thinking about it. the epitome of licensed properties in the mid-2000s, yeah. mid to late 2000s. It's not, it doesn't look awful. But the closer you look, the worse it looks for sure. You know, the the wide, like like top down understanding of this game. You got the voice acting, you got the motion capture, you have the likenesses and you have the song. No one can deny that. Hard to fail from like a, like that's why when the game first started, I was like, awesome. Oh yeah. This is exactly what I want. That whole intro FMV thing was awesome. Where basically it's it starts with uh, down, 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 like the theme song. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's, a cut of the, the the show, like it would be in the show where they show yeah. like quick cuts of all the different stunts, yes. but just animated, like a TV show, or like, a, like a video game. And then, and then it opens to Johnny Knoxville going like, ah, oh, and you broke the goddamn camera, like yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he looks into, the, looks into the fourth wall and goes, right. now you have to do it. You know what it felt like? It felt like an amusement park ride. That's where, a great point. Where you're like, you're like, now you're the astronaut. Save yes. us from the, and you're like, all right, sounds good. Like, and there is, you know, as as much as you know it's fake, there's a party that go, I've been waiting my whole life for this. A hundred percent. And so yeah. like for someone that is a huge Jackass fan or maybe a co-host of a Jackass podcast, uh, Jackass available on the Sad South Network, Join that me. you you are like, finally, this yes. is what I've been waiting for. And Here I was. Go. I've been, I just, every time my phone rings mm -hmm. and it's an unknown number, I'm like, Ooh, Dick has production. Is it Johnny this time? <laughs> is it Johnny? Is he about to tell me that Jeff Tremaine clipped his dick on a fire hydrant <laughs> and I need to film the next season. I'm not gonna lie, that animated clip made me laugh it really was hard. Really funny. It, was really it was really funny. funny. Uh, <laughs> there were moments in this that were undeniably full of character. Yes. It's yes. just that the gameplay itself was so devoid of substance that, yeah. and, and this, this has always been my issue with mini game games in general, like WarioWare was the same way, yeah. where I'm like, you do the mini game once, the novelty wears off. And I know that's not the case with everyone, mm -hmm. but it was definitely the case with this one. Yeah. Especially starting off with Party Boy in that rhythm game. Mm -hmm. And I love Party Boy. He's one you of my favorite Party. human yes. beings in the world. Mm -hmm. And he is a living human being, Party yes, Boy he is. is. Yes. Blatantly absent from Jackass 4, by the forever, by the way, oh. which is super disappointing. Oh. But, uh, but you do that, it's like a rhythm game in the most basic way possible. And once it's done, I'm like, I never want to do that again. No, there is, it just feels like, uh, you know, fan service going like, well, you want a party boy? You got him. And you're like, I guess. 
You know, like, but it's kinda. exactly what I would have thought it was. Like when we right. said it, I was like, I bet you he's going to dance. This is before we played it. I said, I bet you he's going to dance and I bet you it's a rhythm game. Yep. And it was. They didn't put any thought into... The, the thing that's so good about Jackass is their creativity mm -hmm. in the mundane. And just like the concept is people are going to hurt each the other. The mundanity. The mundanity. And, and they come to the table with something crazy where yeah. it's like there, there are a bunch of people in a limo. They think they're going to a photo shoot. We're going to dump bees in the car. Not only that, we're going to put marbles outside of the doors of the limo so that when they get out, they slip. <laughs> and then we're going to fire paintballs at them. That layering and creativity to subvert your expectations Beautiful. is what makes Jackass great. And it felt incredibly absent in this one. And maybe it's because the actors were only involved conceptually in the beginning. And yeah. they weren't like, this isn't enough. Or more likely, they just don't understand video game production. <laughs> well, I just, I loved, because there was very much a clear style where it's like party boys a rhythm game okay sounds good because like we can do that right the other style of the game other than the wii game which was kind of like a, a mini game yes is that is the other ones of like repetition because you have six things that you need to tick off right while in a time limited you know uh, event and and so those are creating replayability hypothetically more like the like a stage in tony hawks like that's clearly what, where they get sure. their influence from where it's yeah. like you here's your setting and you have to do x number of things and each run through, if you complete one, you don't have to do that on the next one. Yeah. So like you need a perfect run, but your progress doesn't carry over between no. one and the next. No, yeah. I did love that. It was like, we made a thing. Where I was like, oh, they were in motion capture. They were in mocap. And then, <laughs> so I guess for the, like the little animated shorts in between, because then it's like, Steve gets kicked off a cliff yeah. and it's just a rag doll rolling exactly. down a hill. Exactly. I'm like, I don't think Steve-O did this. I don't think this was actually Steve-O. <laughs> yeah, it's very clearly just the, the motion capture in the cinematics for the most part especially because like in the rooftop uh, uh shopping cart stop yeah. where you have to like pedal your shopping cart to the edge of a roof and then stop really quickly and whoever yeah. gets closest to the edge uh wins without going off their motion was the exact same whether it was mm -hmm. ryan dunn or whether it was chris pontius so Bonnie's, like yeah. clearly they're not animating their own stunts it's no. just the acting in between yeah which i you know like I, that's not the biggest issue with the game no, so whatever no, like no. but it is just it all these things contribute to going i just kind of uninspired like you know uh version of the game which kind of sucks because it's so which, jackass is so its own thing it's so it's branded it's so clear that when you're looking at it, you're like that's jackass yes and then you play this game and you're like yeah, the the okay. brand is there, but it's like getting a knockoff Louis Vuitton bag. Mm -hmm. It's like the the it looks like it's supposed to. It's got the colors, it's got the patterns, but the quality just isn't quite the same. Yeah, they're like, do you want to play our video game? And you're like, it's kind of a video game. Yeah, yeah. like you know. Um, I'm I'm just looking this up because I, I think maybe we'll get into our our reviews on the game okay. now. Now, as as we mentioned, what we would do if we had experience with the game is give the game a rating out of four bits based on our memory of the game back when we played it. In this case, in 2007, each give it that rating out of mm -hmm. four bits, and then also give it a rating as the game holds up in the modern day against like the modern games like Pokemon hey, Legends Arceus. Come on. Um, because we don't have experience, we're going to imagine what we would have thought of this game had we played it back in 2007 and give it its rating out of four bits. Uh, I have a th I have some thoughts that I definitely want to lead into in okay, my review, please. but do you want to start us off with yours? Sure. Um, I love Jackass as a kid. Of course, I love Jackass as a kid. I was I was 15 years old, and and this was like the peak where I looked at those people. I'm like, they're cool. Yes. I want to be cool like those guys. I, I desperately want it to be. Uh, I'm going to buy a sweatband watch. Uh, you know. You I'm, are cool, man. I'm pretty cool, man. Uh, everyone complimented it. Um, <laughs> Wait, they complimented you? Yeah, you they're, they're always like, have you seen Mikey's uh, sweatband watch? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, that's pretty cool of you to be friends with them. I'm like, thanks, man. I appreciate <sighs> it. Yeah. Fucking sick. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I thought you meant that they complimented your sweatband watch and, and insulted mine. Oh, I never mine. wear that. I would never wear oh, that. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, you couldn't. You can never pull it off. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you look at it and you're like, this is setting up, you know, prime for me to love this right. game. I think you can tell by, <laughs> by the tone of our voice and the things we've said uh, that this game's not great. Right. And you wonder how much as a kid of us loving Jackass would have carried enough for me to get through the game a little bit. I actually think I would have beaten this game. Uh -huh. I, I, I really do. Think, I don't think as like as an adult, we'll get to that in a second where time is valuable. This is like, I would just constantly have wanted to see the different versions that you could keep playing. And I will say for it's in its benefit, every, every game that we played was very different than the last. That's true. That's true. So as you go into each episode, you would be trying new stuff and, you know, working around stuff like that. So I, but I also was 15. I wasn't yeah. seven. You right, know what I mean? Right. So I would have been like, oh, okay, I guess. I'm going to give this a very middling score. I'm going to give this a two out of four. A two out of four. I, 
I think that's respectable. And I don't... It's in line with the reviews. It's absolutely in line <laughs> with the reviews. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I... This is going to be a weird one okay. because I was such a purist of video games back in the day. Right. So much so that I hated licensed video games because yes. I knew yes. they were taking something I loved and dumbing it down to get something out under budget right. and then just putting it out there to try to capitalize on something that people loved. 2007 is the year of Bioshock. Oh. It's the year of Super Mario Galaxy, mm. Mario Galaxy. Yes. It's the year of Mass Effect. Yes. It's the year of, I like that we're looking at each other like Mario or Mario. Mario. Yeah, I did the thing where I, you went and you're like, Mario, like you looked at me and I went, I nodded. I'm like, yes, yes. good job. And then immediately looked away and went, really? Is that <laughs> what it is? What is it? Uh, it's the year of uh, Halo 3. Wow. It's the year of the B-movie game. Uh, a game that we definitely will do. We will definitely have to do that one. Sleep yeah. with as many human women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is it, Sonic again? <laughs> Just, just a, a bee voiced by Jerry Seinfeld and a hedgehog voiced by Ben Schwartz trying to fuck human women. Uh, <laughs> what is happening? What is happening? Um, but because of that, there were great games out there. Oh yeah, and this would have felt. You know, we kind of have that 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 uh, weird unknowing of like what games were like in different eras when we go back and play yes. them. Like when we play a game on the PlayStation 2 like Jackass, we're like, this doesn't look terrible. Mm -hmm. But like, of course not. Because games were starting to look better back then. Yeah. It would be weird if it did look terrible. That would be a huge knock. But I would have approached it as a kid and been like, there are very good games out there. You're taking a thing I love. Like I would have been insulted by it mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to wanting to play it. Yeah. So I'm giving this one a... Oh boy. No, you know what? I have to do this. And I, this is going to sound oh, low, boy. but I'm going to give it a one out of four. Wow. Because, because I think about all the licensed games that I purposely didn't play because I knew about them. I saw the ratings. I was massively obsessed with video games back yes, then. So yes. I knew this came out. Back then. And back then. <laughs> yeah, only back then. <laughs> and it was at like the height of me playing games. And yet I didn't play it. And that I think says enough. So what would I have thought about it? Exactly what I did think about it, which yeah. is not much. And yeah. it's a one out of four. No, I, I think, well, obviously that makes a ton of sense. And, you know, I think our current scores are going to reflect that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just going to go right into our current scores because that, that together, by the way, is a three out of eight. Uh, not great. Uh, oh, did you give it a two? I right, give it a sorry, two. Sorry, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, uh, out of three out of eight. So in our current scores, uh, this game sucks and uh, <laughs> there's not a lot to it and I definitely wouldn't go back and play it and all those thoughts that I, that I said, um, you know, as a kid, what I would have liked about it. I don't have, I don't have time for this. I don't have time mm -hmm. to like go through this and go like, okay, I got to try the poo tug of war again <laughs> because I need to see the next episode. If it wasn't fun, I just wouldn't play it. And unfortunately this game is just not fun. There's movies, there's TV shows. There are seven spinoffs of Jackass. If you want Jackass content, there's a lot out there and it doesn't have to be one of these. Right, right. This game is not good. I, I, I'm going to give it a 0.5. Oh, wow. It's just not, it's not no, good. No, you're, you're not, you're not wrong. Okay. I, like I, your score, your score is totally fair. Yeah. And you're going to hate my score because here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Don't worry. It's not a fucking four out of I am four. Deceased. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. What is the reason why Jackass Forever is getting such high reviews in spite of the fact that it is not as good as the previous three movies? Nostalgia. Nostalgia. I have seen and consumed everything there is to consume about Jackass. There is one thing out there that I haven't. And the looking at the premise even yeah. of a stunt in this had some merits. It yeah. was okay. Yeah. Uh, playing them, not great, but there wasn't a ton of gatekeeping from level to level. You do the stunt and that's kind of all you need to do. So could I see myself spending the two hours it probably takes to go through the entire season, quote unquote, of this of this game. There's a world in which I could just because would I enjoy it? No, but there would be little laughs. It'd be great to 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 listen to Ryan Dunn again, you know, do yeah, something that yeah. I that I haven't seen before. Yeah. Rest of power. I am going to give this one. Oh my God. As a testament to <laughs> Jackass as a franchise. And my love and nostalgia for it. Absolutely. A two out of four. Wow, we flipped. That's crazy. Um, we flipped and I went quite a bit farther than you. Or no, you no, went down. I went lower. Yeah, yeah. I went lower. I did not expect to like this game more now 
than I did back then. But I do think that I was more pretentious about video games back then. I'm still pretty fucking pretentious. I was gonna say. But at least now I have the nostalgia of like like opening up a treasure box or like you're, you open up a box in your parents' closet and you're like, oh shit, here's these memories that I never even knew I could experience. Yeah, like I always, I've talked about how like the best feeling in anyone's life ever this is the greatest moment of anyone's life is when you're like, I'm really enjoying this sandwich and you look down, you have half a more sandwich. Oh, it's the best. It's the best feeling. You're like, it's the best I feeling. got another half of the sandwich and you're thinking, I ate my sandwich. And yes. somebody goes, there's another half sandwich left. Yes. And you're like, oh wow, I get to play this game and then with all my like, friends. It's kind of stale, but it was made in the same location. Is that <laughs> good enough? It's a much shittier version of that first half of the sandwich. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, oh, they forgot a bunch of ingredients. I, like, I, okay. I think it would be more like you just <laughs> returned from the wilderness <laughs> and and you were dying of hunger. Yeah. And you there was a trash bin and you reach in and there's like a there's a full sandwich. Okay. A good one that someone just threw out because they didn't have time to eat it. And you're like, I'm gonna eat this. And it was a delicious sandwich. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna reach back in here and see if I can get another sandwich. Yeah. And there is one, but it's moldy. Right. But it's still sustenance. <laughs> or and I need sustenance. <laughs> you were off to war for four years. Ah, uh-huh. yes. <laughs> You weren't allowed to have a beer. Now, was I trying to dra- draft dodge at this point? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. You were actually doing really evil stuff overseas. Okay. okay. And uh, but that's, an, that's a separate point. And you're not allowed to have a beer. And then you come back and they're like, do you want a cold beer, hero? <laughs> <And> they salute you. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. And, and they're like, uh, all we got is uh, mildly warm Molson Canadian. <laughs> and you're like, a beer is a beer, I guess, at this point. I, it's better than nothing. I thought you were going to say a non-alcoholic beer, but your version's worse. Uh, <laughs> like just, this is better than nothing to you because yes. it's something you like and it's not good, but it's something you like. Yes, exactly. It's 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 uh, like how some people will like chew on a pen to to get the the feeling of smoking a cigarette, yes. like to, to get rid of that fixation. Like that's why they you have a lot of people who give up smoking, develop an oral fixation, like with straws or chewing yep. on things like mm-hmm. that. You're not enjoying chewing on a straw, no. but it's giving you your fix. Yeah, hundred percent, absolutely. So that's well, that's very interesting. So that altogether is going to be a five and a half out of sixteen. Obviously, a stellar score. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> five and a half out of sixteen. Oh my god, it's not great. No, um, and and honestly, I don't know. I don't know if I expected anything different. Okay, I'm glad you, that was literally the next thing out of my mouth where I'm like, yeah, but at the same time, yeah, that's what we should have expected. Yeah, I, 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 is there a world in which you would ever go back and play this game? Probably not, unless it was for the podcast. That's fair, that's fair. And we may actually, maybe we'll do a crossover with uh, uh, with Jackass at some point where yes. we can kind of tour guide the other two hosts of Jackass it's over a great idea. with one of these games. When you guys and- are out of uh, material in four years, yes, exactly. uh, <laughs> you can come back and we'll play the game and I, we, yeah, we'll tell them all about it. That's we'll tell perfect. them all about the urban wake, suburban wakeboarding. Suburban wakeboarding. Yes. And I, I'd love to see if they get the reference to urban kayaking yeah. to see. Because that, like that's the kind of thing that as a, and I don't want to overplay this or anything, but as a as a connoisseur of jackass, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a sommelier of jackass, <laughs> um, I I would pick up on some of those references, and yes. that would be enough to satiate me and to get me through the uh, uh, the terrible mini games. Oh, I, I can't, yeah, I can't wait to go. Like, hey guys, so so this is uh, we'll talk to Chris and Jay, obviously your co-host and Jackass, uh, a podcast that you should be subscribing and reviewing, uh, and I'll go like, Jay, this one's a poo tug of war. <laughs> I have to I have to watch out as he salivates. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's you know it, the game is not exactly what you want. No, but it is jackass. I got to hear the party boy theme. Yes, it's awesome. I uh-huh. got to hear Ryan Dunn's voice. Great. Yes, absolutely. I got to see Preston Lacey shit his pants while squatting. <laughs> not a lot of weight. Awesome. It's all I wanted. I got to see Sivo roll roll unconsciously down a hill. <laughs> I, everyone got what they wanted out of this game. But once again, you know, Jackass Forever is out there right now. It's the biggest movie in the world. Hell yeah. Uh, please go out and watch it. And please let Mikey know what you think about the game. And go over to Jackass, uh, an incredible podcast that we're very lucky to have on the Sad Styles Network. You can also follow us uh, at Jackass Pod on Twitter and there Instagram. We go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there we go. And that's where you can get all your thoughts on the, the movie. You well, can tell I, them speaking of thoughts, I think I hear music playing. Do you hear that music? Is it is it a large banjo? <laughs> it's, a lo- <laughs> it's a large banjo, but definitely with a hint of oboe. Oh. So I think we got the award coming in. Let's let the band play us on. You've been waiting for it all year. The most glamorous award ceremony of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, the Grady's. Wow. Yeah. Great. Beautiful. I mean, Jackass's art, that music is 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 not quite at Jackass's yeah. level. But if-, if Highbrow, lowbrow. Highbrow, high brow, lowbrow. Classical orchestra, lowbrow. If Jackass, highbrow. <laughs> if that song were to jump into a pile of elephant shit, it would have been art. 
It would have been art. Uh, we got Elliot coming on board. Elliot. And you know what? It's look, it's Preston Lacey, it's Wee Man, and it's oh. Elliot, and they're all in their diapers chasing yes. each other around. This is great. You got it's, the big yeah. guy, the little guy, and the fucking jacked Elliot in between them. Nature is healing. Nature is <laughs> healing. This, why, yes. uh, Elliot, why don't you reach into that diaper of yours and uh, oh, let us know God. what awards this game's won? Disgusting. Disgusting. Ah, oh, crickets. Wow. Crickets That's, yet that again. It's too bad. Not surprised. No, actually, not, you know what? If anything, surprised it didn't get one of the bad scores. Yes, one of those bad awards. Yeah. One of the I, bad awards. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> tis, tis, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those bad awards. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, like a Razzie, you know, but would it be cool? Like, would it be one of those cool video games that shows up to the Razzies and accepts the award like some celebrities do? 100%. Owns it? 100%. Yeah, Isn't that now, like, once it's been done once or twice, like, I think Tom Green did that for Freddy Got Fingered or something. Sandra Bullock did it. Oh, did she? Yeah, Sandra Bullock did it. I think Hallie. For what, The Blind Side? Yeah, uh, yeah, she won the Oscars the next day and the Razzies. She's yeah. holding it for both awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I think it's all she about Steve. Oh. It's such a good movie that you immediately, I don't know why I said it. Like everyone's gonna be like, oh yeah, of course I saw that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so yeah, that, that and you know, Halle Berry for Catwoman. Who could forget? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got our, uh, we've got our envelopes where we get, uh, we have the custom awards right. uh, to, to give this one. I've got, I've got mine. Do you have okay. your, your yeah, envelope there? I've got there? mine here. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Um, Do you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Yeah. So I'm opening up the envelope. Yeah, I got it here. Long. Um, oh, it's very sweet. It's the uh, the Wee Man Award because I got a wee bit of enjoyment out of this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Okay, so oh wait, you threw. Oh, I that's threw pretty it. good. Oh, that was nice. Okay, uh, mine is the Kicked in the Nuts Award. Ooh, what kicked in the nuts? What? That's that weird. Doesn't... Yeah. Oh, because it hurts. Because <laughs> it's something you usually love, but it hurts. Oh, like your genitals. <laughs> I usually love, I my, love genitals. my genitals. It usually brings me so much usually. pleasure. Usually. Usually. Except when you kick them in. <laughs> then I don't get mad at the person who kicked me. I get no. mad at the genitals for feeling the pain. <laughs> How dare you receive pain? You're my pleasure sector. You're either big, large, or a vagina. <laughs> A small, larger of a giant. Oh, you got man. it. Andrew, I had a fucking blast. Oh, I'm this was so much this. fun. This was a, a ton of fun. Jackass spreads joy, man. It really does. It really they does. should call it Joycast. It's a good idea. Free idea out there for you guys. <laughs> Joycast out there. Oh, man. But once again, last time, go listen to Jackass the Podcast, a wonderful podcast on the Sass Styles Network. But thank you so much for listening. We love every single one of you, and we can't wait to talk to you soon. My name is Andrew Bascom, and with me, as always, is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself, Mikey Aaronworth. This is the Retrograde Podcast. Game over. Thank you so much for listening to the Retrograde Podcast. We look forward to recording this podcast all week long, and we hope you guys look forward to listening to it. You know how we got into retro video game podcasting for the money and the babes? We're really in it for the ratings and reviews. Money is ratings, reviews are babes. Please subscribe, rate, and review wherever you enjoy podcasts. For any business inquiries, you can always email the Retrograde Podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at Retrograde Pod. And you can find Andrew on Twitter at Retrograde Andy. And then Mikey at Retrograde Mikey. Instagram at The Retrograde Podcast. And remember, Find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the retrograde podcast for all of your non-essential but very much enjoyable content. We don't ask that you give us much, apart from joining our Patreon. But what we do ask is that you join this community that we've grown. Also, yeah. give us some of your blood. <laughs> yeah. I want some of your hair in a bag. Thanks for listening. From your two dads. <laughs> Furnished by Sad Styles Productions. Come wash my back. That's what Johnny Knoxville says at the end. Oh, okay. <laughs>